Welcome to the day in my life with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I like to start off the day by checking all of my social channels like Instagram, TikTok, Threads, and sometimes Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. And then I also like to check up on the YouTube Studio app. I like to do this right away because it's not only a big part to what I do, but it also allows me to get all of my distractions out of the way. And speaking of distractions, I also have to throw in a few games of LEGO Star Wars Battles because I'm just crazy addicted to this game. As I've been going caseless, I can confidently say that the switch to titanium was the right move. The white titanium is the best color. Don't at me. The matte frame feels nice, and it's something I appreciate every time I'm using my phone. It's less prone to fingerprints, and the slightly rounded edges really remind me of the iPhone 6 days with just how comfortable it is to hold. I start by working on my to-do list and getting things ready and planned for the rest of the day. I love using the app Things 3, and it's been my go-to for the last couple of years. Also, the home screen widget is a huge bonus as I can quickly glance at what's next and also check off things thanks to the interactive widgets in iOS 17. But before tackling this list, we gotta head out for some coffee. I brought my MacBook Pro along to get some light work done, such as emails and scripting, basically anything related to admin style tasks. And although I am using my laptop, my iPhone plays a crucial part when I'm out as I always connect to my phone as a personal hotspot to avoid using or relying on public Wi-Fi networks. Before wrapping up, I sent a vertical video over to my phone to upload to social media, had a quick bite to eat, took a nice sip of coffee, and now we're off. So we're back at the desk setup and I actually have some upgrades I'm gonna be making here today and they kind of go against what I did in my recent updated desk setup tour video, but it's okay, it's besides the point. CalDigit was kind enough to send over their Thunderbolt 4 docking station and I am really excited to check this out because I used to use and love the Thunderbolt 3 version. I just had one little gripe and I think it's gonna translate over to this one as well. And that's the fact that 3M and this thing don't mix. I've used 3M Velcro. I've used double-sided tape. I've used the heavy duty stuff. I just want to have this to either stick under or beside my desk and 3M just won't hold it. So what I decided to do was go on Amazon and get a laptop tray that was just thick enough to hold the docking station. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Gorilla Glue tape. I'm going to tape it here, tape the docking station to it, like sandwich it together. And hopefully that'll stop it from wobbling around when I'm like connecting things and taking things out. And then I'm just going to screw it into my desk. Hopefully this works. Hopefully Hopefully it's a really solid, secured solution to this, but let's find out. Three, two, one. Oh wow, this, well, this actually really worked. Cool, okay, let's, let's set this up then. With the addition of this Thunderbolt 4 dock, I decided to remove my iPad and set up a portable external monitor for an additional screen to my Mac. I also wanted to switch out this blue book that I had on my shelf with this old VHS copy of Star Wars Return of the Jedi. It was lost for a while, but luckily I found it, and now I just need to find the others that went into the box set. With the desk setup upgrades out of the way, it's time to move on to some short form vertical content, and I'm gonna be filming everything on my iPhone, as I haven't really had a chance to use this as like my main camera yet, which also brings me to my favorite accessory to pair with my iPhone, and also newest tool to the camera arsenal, which is this Moft Snap Phone tripod stand.
Being able to fit a mini tripod in my pocket brings the convenience of shooting on my iPhone to another level. The ability to set up my iPhone anywhere and everywhere has allowed me to not only speed up my workflow, but also let me focus on the actual shot instead of my camera. Thanks to the strong MagSafe connection and hinge mechanism, I can get the perfect angle no matter what the scenario is. Like this angle for an example, honestly wouldn't be possible without this tripod stand. The Moff Snap tripod stand offers three main modes, including the floating mode, vlogging mode, and stand mode, where the floating and vlogging mode have been most used when it comes to shooting content, especially when I'm outdoors. And the stand mode allows me to prompt up my phone when I wanna watch movies or videos or YouTube, or just want to utilize standby mode on my desk. If you're interested in finding out more about the Snap Tripod Stand, head over to the first link in the description and huge thanks to Moff for sponsoring this video. Right as I was finishing up my filming, I had a package arrive, which was the Samsung T7. This is going to come in handy right away, and I picked up the one terabyte version, which happened to be not only on sale, but also I just really needed a new external drive to edit all of my videos off of. Speaking of editing videos, it's time to get a bit of video editing done. I offloaded all of my footage onto this new T7 drive using the USB-C port, which I am so happy USB-C is finally here on the iPhone. While I'm editing, I decided to throw on some YouTube for a bit of background noise. This isn't something that I do too often, but with so many of my favorite creators releasing videos on the new M3 MacBook Pro, it's hard not to binge watch the YouTube videos. Okay. Are you guys interested in a review of the M3 MacBook Pro? And if you are, which spec or model should I go with? I'm most interested in just the baseline, eight gigs of RAM and the 512 gigs of storage because I wanna see if that's enough or pro enough. But let me know in the comments what I should check out. With editing out of the way, it's time to mark off some of my to-dos and get some brainstorming done for some upcoming videos. When it comes to brainstorming, I always start off by dictating to my phone, just spilling a bunch of my thoughts and ideas off the top of my head. And I do this by running a Siri shortcut, which I now have activated through the action button. One of the things I was really excited to explore with the new iPhone was the action button. I leave my phone on mute most of the time, so I was intrigued by the potential of this new addition. I have the action button set up to a Siri shortcut that opens a folder that has additional Siri shortcuts built inside, and this allows me to add or choose certain actions based on what I need. The last thing left to do is edit the photos that I shot on my iPhone earlier, and I'm gonna do something a little crazy here, which is swap out my Mac Studio for my iPhone. Bear with me here. So using a USB-C dongle, I can connect my display, my speakers for background music, keep my iPhone charged, and connect an external SSD all at the same time. I know this looks absolutely insane, but I mean, hey, the iPhone can now do this, so why not try it out? Plus with the new A17 Pro chip, it's actually a pretty solid experience. Like I could see myself definitely using this when gaming becomes the real deal on the iPhone. It's getting a bit late, so it's time to wind down. I switched my setup back to the Mac Studio, quickly ran clean my Mac X and cleaned up all my junk files within Mac OS, shut everything down here at the setup and headed over to the couch to play some Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5. This has become my favorite game of the year. Well close. Basically I have it tied with Jedi Survivor which is currently my favorite game but I think once I finish this main storyline in Spider-Man it's gonna take the number one spot. After gaming for a bit it's time to watch a quick movie while checking on my socials once again going through any new emails and notifications that I missed throughout the day. With the day coming to an end I wanted to give my final thoughts on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. To keep it short and sweet, this is my favorite iPhone, and that's not an exaggeration as we have that classic iPhone 4 boxy look, but those rounded edges like the iPhone 6 that just fit so good and comfortably in your hand. It's lightweight thanks to the all new titanium build and the action button is a great replacement to the mute switch. And when it comes to the cameras, I mean, I think the scary fast event kind of says enough. And when it comes to battery life, it's pretty good. It's on par with the last couple generations of iPhone. I usually end the day around 35 to 40%, so really nothing to complain about. That's it for me. Thank you for joining me today. It was a lot of fun making this video, so I'm definitely gonna have to do this more in the future, maybe revolving around like different products and whatnot. And as always, if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you like Apple tech or desk setup related content, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, peace.